Hey everybody, Steve here. Uh, this video we're going to talk about narrow-minded people. Um, it seems that, you know what, whenever you run into a narrow-minded person, they're just bad, they're evil, they tell lies all the time, you can't trust them, they've got squinty eyes, they've got the beady look, and you just, they're terrible people, these narrow-minded people. We see it in American Christianity all the time when somebody speaks or says something and it's like, oops, oh, anything you say that's negative is, is suddenly narrow-minded. Narrow-minded, oh, you can't be a Christian and be narrow-minded. You know, you can't hold to one standard because that's wrong. You know, Lord forbid we, we do that. You know, we can't have any and none of that. We can't think about what they're saying. It's amazing how when the truth of God's word is being put out, here it is, in context to a situation. It's not this out of out of context buffet of theology thing that some people got going on. Well, they're, they'll ignore some sin here, but they'll rebuke some of it here, or it's okay here, but not in this situation. You know, there's a sliding scale of morality that is obviously what we do not see in God's word. But if you have somebody that comes to the point of where they say, this is what God's word says, and it says it not only in the Old Testament, but the New Testament, and I can show you time and time and time again in that situation that applies to what you're talking about, God is the same. He doesn't put up with sin. And when you put forth that message, the message that confronts sin, that confronts error, that confronts false teaching, that confronts uh, false prophecies, or immoral behavior, lying, cheating, stealing, adultery, bigamy, um, and any of those things that God regards as sin, that suddenly you're narrow-minded. Why is it when somebody can take this and show you in context time and time again over and over an area of either for me personally of some things that I've done in my life that I personally experienced and I know that hey sin leads to death and it ain't good and you're gonna have to repent and confess and that's what I had to do and to save you the pain of that and to save the pain of the separation that sin, sin brings to your life and your relationship with God my experience, and more importantly, the testimony of God's word says, don't do it. It's too easy. But I'm narrow-minded. But when people in the Bible, the New Testament believers, Jesus, when they adhere to God's standard and they teach and promote and train in righteousness according to God's word, they're not narrow-minded. Why is that? I think it's because the words on the page are not as convicting, to them at least, as somebody who can be face to face, that can look in their eye, and they can see there's that discernment thing that goes on, or that conviction of the Holy Spirit on their part, where it's like a, a person says something from God's Word, and it cuts them to the quick. And it convicts them of sin. And instead of saying, you know what, boom, I've been, that applies to me. I need to stop. I need to, to, to get back to God in his word. Because not only do I know it deep in my heart, it's becoming evident to other people. And the Holy Spirit is doing the convicting. It's not me. It's not Joe down the street or, or some pastor or whatever. That's the Holy Spirit's job is to convict you. So it's kind of, it kind of goes back to that saying, don't shoot the messenger, because the message still applies whether I give it or not. The testimony of God's word about sin and the separation and the death that it brings is still here, and it's going to stand for eternity. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but me and my words will last forever. So if I or someone else preaches the in-context word of God in regards to sin, false teaching, false prophecies, whatever the case may be, to whoever it applies to, 
how is that being narrow-minded? Now, if you haven't caught on, you've probably noticed that the reason I'm saying this is I've gotten some messages of, and it's not too often that I get these messages, but I, every once in a while, I'll get a couple of people that will they'll, they'll send a PM or they'll do a comment. And they'll say, oh, you're narrow-minded and blah, 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 blah. And, you, oh, you never did this or never did that. And it's like, you know what? Uh, the testimony I give is true. And I would give before God and in a court of law. The experiences that I've had in different churches of things where pastors have been way out in left field. It's the truth. And it's unfortunate that I would have to experience that. But if pastors and elders and deacons were truly mature in the Lord, then they wouldn't be doing these things. I wouldn't have had to experience those things. And there wouldn't have been a call towards correction or admonishing or encouraging people to get back to the truth of God and His Word. But instead, you're labeled as narrow-minded. Well, Jesus was narrow-minded. He said, repent or perish. That's pretty narrow-minded. When Paul talked about uh, laying off the old nature and leaving that all behind because we've, been, we've died in him and we've, we've been risen with him in new life, we're a new creature in Christ, you're not supposed to go back and do the sins, the same sins and continue in those sins that you did before, but rather you should live as God wants you to live, to do his will, to be an approved workman. That's pretty narrow-minded. How about God in the Old Testament where he told his children, the people of Israel, and he said, be holy as I am holy. That's pretty narrow-minded, isn't it? What about all the, the Ten Commandments? Uh, don't idolatry and don't steal, don't lie, don't give false testimony, don't commit adultery, all those things. That's pretty narrow-minded. If you're narrow-minded for the truth of what God says and what we see in His Word, and those two will never conflict, isn't that what we're called to do? Isn't that why we're called to be aliens and strangers in this world? Because the world is going to do what it's going to do and it's centered on sin and satisfying that flesh rather than being disciplined and self-controlled to renew our mind with God's word to confess our sins to be faithful that he is faithful and just to do that and that we are bought at a price so that we no longer live the lives to satisfy the flesh but to do the will of the Father There's, and these people will come up and they'll say to Christians that stand on God's word, and they'll say, oh, you're narrow-minded. But yet they don't provide one scripture. They don't provide any proof whatsoever other than you're narrow-minded. I can provide scriptures. I can show you in God's word. I can give testimony of what I've personally experienced, and I give it in a court of law. The funny thing is, these people who say that you're narrow-minded and they're, they're supposedly believers, but they continue attacking you, where's their proof? Where's their source? Where is the evidence? If this was a court of law, what evidence do they have other than the comment of saying you're narrow-minded? It's simple. <laughs> they don't have any. They got to rely on the traditions of men and faulty logic, and uh, that's about it. A way that seems right to a man is going to lead to death. That's why we need to be disciplined and self-controlled. So anyway, for all those people out there who say that believers who stand on God and His Word are narrow-minded, uh, I just want you to know, if you're one of those believers, you're in good company with God, with Jesus the believers in the New Testament. And that's what God calls us to be set apart, to serve Him. And we have to be narrow-minded in our desires to serve Him. So anyway, that's all i got time for. Take care. God bless. Peace.